Thank you everybody who is uh, here in person and everybody uh, on, uh, on X right now. Okay, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about Telos, some of the things we're doing, and, uh, and uh, one big thing that uh, we're gonna get started on very soon. Um, so, a little bit about Telos. We've been around since 2018. Um, interestingly enough, if any of you remember EOS, there was a very big ICO, four and a half billion dollar ICO. Um, and I guess uh, that community felt like much of the uh, funds generated from that token sale were not invested into the project, and so they forked um, and basically retained the delegated proof of stake base layer, and they airdropped the entire supply. So it's like the mirror image of the EOS ICO. So no, 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 no token sale, no OVCs, no nothing, just totally organic. Um, somehow this project over the years has grinded through um, in 2021, uh, it came onto uh, my radar. There was a uh, very, very significant um, exploit in Ethereum that was discovered by uh, an auditing group called Sentinel as they were fuzz testing the uh, Telos EVM. Um, fortunately, that was patched, but that's how Telos entered into Ethereum lore to begin with. Uh, shortly after that, they launched the uh, EVM. And then uh, in 2023, we've had a really busy year um, accelerating and moving into the uh, ZK space. So a little bit about some of our core infrastructure products. Telos Zero is our delegated proof of stake base layer. And uh, one of the things that's really interesting about this particular type of uh, core infrastructure is the entry barrier is very, very low. You don't need, for example, 32 ETH to participate. Anyone can participate. And as it turns out, this system has proven to be quite robust as it's produced nearly 400 million blocks without any downtime over the last six years. In addition to that, we have an EVM that uh, basically we emulate within that layer zero, uh, so Rust and Wasm. Uh, the performance characteristics are very, very high, uh, and this thing has been running for quite a few years as well. Um, okay, so this year, I joined Telos. Some of you might remember me as the consensus guy, and I guess before that I was uh, at the Bitcoin Center. i have been in this space, I guess, about 12 years. Uh, I spent uh, six years at consensus helping build Ethereum, and then I was one of the Polygon guys. I run my, my own venture fund. I invest in a lot of companies that are here. Um, and this year I took a very active role in Telos and uh, the reason for that is because I think there's a tremendous change that's happening and um, I wanted to be a part of that. So this is a quick snapshot of what the new Telos looks like. We've been very busy this year hiring and partnering. And uh, I would say, uh, yeah, it's been quite, quite a busy year, quite a busy uh, seven, eight months. I think we've got like 11 or 12 PhDs now. And uh, these are very hardworking people, some of the best ZK researchers in the world. We were very fortunate to partner with uh, Ponos Technology. Ponos is at the forefront of hardware software co-design, and I'll talk a little bit about that and why it's important, in particular hardware acceleration. Uh, we also partnered with Atka. These are very good friends of mine. Uh, they run one of the best incubators in Paris. Uh, they incubated, for example, Morpho, Mangrove, and others. Uh, we also were able to hire Jerome. He's the founder of SCC and the founder of Ethereum France. And we were able to hire uh, some really good engineering talent. So the Telos team looks very different today than it did at the start of the year. Um, and so we've been very busy working on all sorts of uh, ZK infrastructure development. In particular, we've been focused on something called SnarkTor. And SnarkTor is our uh, decentralized recursive proof protocol. So recursive proofs are basically uh, you sort of have one proof and you have underneath that proof a number of underlying proofs. And so in this way you can sort of aggregate and what you post on chain is much more efficient, allowing for tremendous scalability at a much lower cost. So we've been working on SnarkTor for a little over a year. We released the white paper earlier this year and we've begun building the protocol. Um, so just thinking about recursive proof aggregation, in particular uh, one of the things that we're looking to unlock is uh, data compliance leading to uh, and data protection leading to self-sovereign identity, self-sovereign identity and reputation systems. So the extent to which you can have ownership of your identity and selectively disclose or granularly authenticate some attributes 
about your identity. One of the examples that we use very often is uh, you would never use a blockchain system to rent a car if it meant putting your license on chain forever. But you may use a blockchain system to rent a car if all you had to do was share a proof on chain that some attribute about you corresponds to the requirements for renting the car, such as you're of legal age and you have a valid driver's license. So we think proof aggregation is a very critical component to realizing ZK at scale, and SnarkTor is basically our bet and uh, our research effort uh, thus far in this direction. We also recently uh, put out a uh, proof of concept of SnarkTor, and we have actually a booth here at uh, Token 2049, and you can take a look and see basically this architecture in action. We are simulating a game of Battleship, and it's running without uh, the two opponents knowing the contents of the other's transactions. Um, okay, and then the other thing that we're working on is hardware, the hardware accelerated ZKVM L2. So taking a hardware software co-design from the start, one of the things that I think many people have been talking about, uh, particularly very influential Ethereum people of late, is the importance of hardware acceleration. And some people have even discussed, for example, SNARK proving ASICs, and in some ways even Ethereum moving back to potentially a type of useful proof of work with uh, proving ZK as uh, the engine that potentially could even drive um, consensus one day. So, taking a hardware software co-design approach from the start is really critical because if you want to effectively accelerate with hardware, you need to sort of take that into account from the very beginning before you go and build whatever system it is that you're going to build. And so, we've been very focused on that for some time. We've released some benchmark testing and we'll be releasing a lot more of that um, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, just a quick snapshot of our ZK roadmap. Um, and so we are currently working on the ZK VM. We're working on SnarkTor. We plan on releasing everything towards the early part of Q1 going into Q2. Uh, basically going into the latter part of next year and towards the end of 2025, a full integration of SnarkTor on our ZK VM L2 and essentially that becoming the efficient proof verification layer for, for Ethereum and other blockchains. And this is what I mentioned earlier, just a quick snapshot in terms of what some of the most important people in Ethereum have been talking about for some time. So Justin Drake, a few months ago, tweeted a picture of the uh, first ever snark proving ASIC chip, and I actually have this chip with me, I carried around. I went to Shenzhen and I met Axial, who's uh, one of the first manufacturers of these uh, ZK proving ASICs. Uh, Vitalik also talked about it at the uh, Hashkey conference in Hong Kong as well. And so the importance of accelerating the current state of ZK across Ethereum and the extent to which hardware is going to play a really important role in all of that. Okay, just a quick snapshot in terms of growth. So Telos has been doing organic only. We don't do any gimmick marketing, nothing like that. Uh, we've just been sort of grinding away, grinding away, and slowly, somehow, we're starting to grow. Um, we have been participating in a lot of events. We've done lots and lots of events. We did Dubai, Token 2049, SCC, et cetera. We're gonna continue doing events. Um, it's a great way to interact with our community, and we're very happy to see uh, quite a number of community members who, who came to uh, Singapore. Okay, so what's next? Um, this is, I guess, the part that uh, most people on our spaces have been waiting for. And uh, before I get to that part, I would say that uh, one of the biggest pieces of feedback or sort of constant pieces of input we hear from the community is when are you gonna get listed on this exchange or that exchange and um, the importance of increasing uh, exposure and access to the token and you know, one of the things that tell us we don't do is uh, basically solicit exchanges. We don't engage in any of that kind of activity. Any time the Telos token has ever been listed has been in an organic process. Um, but at the same time, we also have this kind of motto where we just do things ourselves. And uh, it's kind of like if you want something done right, you should do it yourself. So to that end, as a response, we are very happy to announce the uh, uh, we will be launching Telos X. So this is the uh, Telos Exchange, 
and Telos X is uh, part of the Binance Link program. So very happy to announce that as well. The Binance Link program is probably, I would say, in terms of um, this type of a product, the best possible partnership you can have. Uh, the Binance Link program offers a number of backend infrastructure components, including uh, accounts, subaccounts, all the volume, all the liquidity, all of the security, and all of the state-of-the-art compliance as well. And so you can go ahead and create a front end and custom make it and tailor make it to your community in response to your community needs. So TelosX is going to be a uh, community-owned exchange. Uh, we're going to be prioritizing uh, Telos pairings. So lots and lots of uh, opportunity for the token, basically on our own exchange, to be broadly available. Um, we're going to be going global. However, step by step, we've identified a number of regions and we'll be rolling out um, in each region in a compliant manner, of course, uh, starting, I guess, uh, in the first part of next year. So in terms of some key features, streamlined uh, listings, this is sort of like uh, the opportunity for a multitude of products and projects that are currently deployed or looking to deploy on the Telos ecosystem and the Telos network. Uh, we will be there for you and we'll be able to offer you support and an opportunity to uh, list on Telos X. Uh, the, of course, Telos token pairing, so uh, one of the key sort of, um, let's say, attributes of this exchange will be that the Telos token will be front and center. Uh, we are going to be, uh, again, within, uh, depending on which jurisdiction, offering a variety of different incentive programs and rewards, including a potential buy and burn program. And then global expansion. We're looking to expand all over the world, and we will be announcing more news about that in some detail. Uh, I would say for 2025, we're probably looking at 10 to 12 regions, but uh, depending on how things go, maybe, maybe even more. So, um, yeah, that's the news. We're going to be launching our own, our own exchange. We're going to be integrating that into the Telos ecosystem. And for our community members, we will be very similar to some of the tremendous, wonderful user experience um, products and solutions you see, for example, with Base and Coinbase, the, the opportunity to, in a very frictionless way, interact with the network, interact with the exchange. Um, have a beautiful, seamless experience. We're going to be offering that to our community as a community-owned exchange. Um, and yeah, here's uh, some QR codes if you want to get in touch. The uh, new TelosX Twitter account, I guess, uh, should be tweeted or posted now. And uh, we look forward to uh, feedback from our community and working together to uh, make TelosX a key part of uh, the Telos ecosystem. Thank you very much.